Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Greg Power. Greg is the Fisheries Division Chief for Game and Fish. Greg, as we get a little closer to the end of winter, uh, we're still getting some chilly temperatures, but this is the time of year anglers start to wonder if we're gonna see any winter kill. Right. We did have a fairly mild winter. Um, actually, your crews are still out, but you do have a specific way of of telling if a lake's in trouble. Right, the, the crews, all, all the districts statewide go out and check the DO. Well, they check a couple things, but in particular, the dissolved oxygen in the lakes uh, from top to bottom in the deep holes of, they don't get to all the lakes, but they get to well, probably over half the lakes statewide, the ones that receive more fishing att attention. And they do it in from oh, mid to late January through through the end of February, when typically the oxygen levels are at their lowest, and they have uh, instruments that right, can tell right. they uh, have hydro hydro labs, and yeah, they're, it's it's much easier than the old days. Okay, why do you do it this time of year, late well, January, February? Again, uh, right. The, I mean, this time of the year, typically historically, uh, the the oxygen levels are going to be at the lowest because of the day length, you're just coming off, you know, in December, late December, early January, the day length is at its shortest. You don't have much photosynthesis going on. And then also you get the accumulation of snow on the ice. You have the snowpack typically is at its highest in mid to late February. So you have the least amount of light penetration going into the water, lack of photosynthesis. This is the time that it's going to be at its worst. Or I should say, probably in the early part of February be where it's at its worst. Okay, you just kind of partially answered my next question, but what is specifically winter kill and what causes sure. it? Yeah, it's just light pin, you know, f fish need oxygen in the water, no different than we need oxygen, you know. The, the light penetration is critical. The sun length will go into the water and plants, plants grow underwater. Uh, there's a lot of life going on underwater, even in the dead of winter. Uh, so they need that light penetration, and if they, ha they have good light penetration, the, the plants are growing well and they're releasing oxygen and everything's going you know, great. However, if you get a lot of snow on the ice, especially when you get a lot of snow on the ice, and then, uh, you know, if the ice froze up really uh, cloudy, if there's a big wind event as the lake froze, that really hurts light penetration into the water column. And uh, plants, you know, they quit growing. Once they quit growing, they decompose and there's no oxygen being released and, and it becomes a kind of a hostile environment for fish. Typically we need, depending upon the species of fish too, but you know, for walleye, perch and pike, which most people are targeting, you need to have the oxygen certainly above two, preferably above three parts per million. For the most part in the state, we haven't had a lot of snow so far this winter, but of course winter's not done yet. What if a lake's doing okay now uh, we get a big dump of snow here a little bit later on. Is that going to affect a lake? It, it shouldn't. Uh, typically our problems are going to be the marginal lakes, lakes that we already know we have a problem with. Uh, the oxygen levels are, let's say, are down there around that two parts per million. And now we get a big dump of snow. Those are the lakes going to be in trouble. But if a lake's in good shape right now, uh, oxygen levels are around seven, something like that. No matter how much snow you get from here on out, you're, you're, they're probably going to be okay. Uh, and, and right now it looks really good statewide where we haven't had one report of a true winter kill yet, which is a little bit atypical. Normally we do have documented some dead fish in some lake. We haven't had any of that yet. We've had a, oh, maybe a dozen, 15 lakes statewide that are marginal. M many of them are lakes that we typically have problems with anyways. Right, out of 400, that's not Out bad. of 400 plus lakes, yeah. And you compare that to six years ago after coming off those couple bad winters. There's one, one spring we had, I think, a little over 60 lakes that had some type of winter kill. Is that because of the lack of snow, you think? Oh, it was then, yeah. Sure. <laughs> or, or right now it's because <laughs> of the lack of snow. And be, uh, you know, if you go back, remember those three bad winters, that, that really set us back quite a bit because of too much snow. Right. Um, lack of snow isn't always a good thing. Well, it's short term, it's a great thing. Right now, you know, in February, looking at, you know, you sure don't want to lose a nice population of fish in the lake, and we look in great shape. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is the lack of snow. Is, that snow is also critical, obviously, for runoff to keep these lakes up, the water levels up, and uh, uh, spring runoff is one of the most important times for replenishing the water body. 
and it sure doesn't look in this state that, especially south of uh, I-94, that we're going to have a lot of runoff sure. unless something happens. And that can happen. I mean, things can ch change in this state in late February, March. But at this point, we do, it doesn't look like we're going to have a lot of runoff, and we're kind of wishing we'd have some. Because uh, so, as you get further in south central, southeast North Dakota, our water levels are, we, you know, we're losing water here the last year or two. One thing we haven't heard a lot of talk about this winter, speaking of runoff, is a snowpack in, in the mountains. Sure. And it, of course, affects the Missouri River system and all the, the lakes and the river and things. How is the snowpack? It has been kind of quiet. Uh, you know, you haven't heard much because it, it's probably average. It's not the extremes. It's not super dry and it's, you know, not a lot of snow in the sure. mountains. But, you know, at mid, mid to late February, uh, snowpack is close to average, just, just slightly below average. Uh, the core is predicting or forecasting a, a near normal year for runoff and both Sakakawea uh, River, Wahi, it, sh it should be a non-issue at this point for sure. All right. As long as we're talking about winter kill, Greg, if a lake winter kills, it's not the end of the world. We have very effective stocking programs. Uh, yeah. This state, North Dakota, probably of any state in the union, probably uh, experiences more winter kill than any other state. Uh, so, and, and that's be always been the case, you know, for 40, 50, 60 years. So we're used to dealing with winter kill. Uh, Management-wise, we'll get in there. We need the public to report it at ice out again, you know, if they see dead fish. Uh, the sooner we know about it, the quicker we can get it into the, into the uh, routine of stocking, so get them into the rotation of stocking, and we can get them up and running. Depending upon the species, it, within a year or two, they'll be up back uh, producing pretty good fish. All in all, things look pretty good. Oh, they do, they all do, right. yep. Thanks, Greg. You bet. There are a few bills before the legislature this session that could have an effect on outdoors men and women if they're passed or if they fail. If you want to keep tabs on these bills or others dealing with the outdoors, log on to the Game and Fish website. There is a link that will connect you with the legislative page. It has many unique features. It explains bills in much simpler terms than the legislative jargon in which they're written, a Cliff Notes version of the bill, so to speak. It also gives a brief summary of how the bill would affect hunters and fishermen. And if you feel strongly about the issue and wish to contact the lawmakers from your district, it also has links with contact information for each legislator. Go to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov and find the hot link that will take you directly to the legislative page. For Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.